You're like, that's why you're not losing weight. <laughs> no. Um, I would say learning to do keto. I actually had a friend who I was like, why aren't you losing any weight? Like, are you being strict? What are you doing? And she finally admitted that she was having some chocolate and dipping it in the peanut butter really? and things at night. And she actually find found a way to make um, like this low carb sugar sugar candy, uh, not sugar. I was thinking of sugar, low carb chocolate bar or something like right. that with um, a low carb like peanut butter mix. Oh, it was to die for. I'll have to get the recipe for you. So I would say learning to make three treats that you can rotate that's chocolate. Yeah. And that way you're doing a low keto snack nice. dessert. Right? Have you ever seen the peanut butter balls they make with like yeah, just yeah, yeah. granola? Yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah. Honey to give you that natural sugar you right. need so it's not that pure sugar. That's so smart. I would say do that yeah, first. Okay. Because I was gonna ask you if you substitute if you substitute like any fruits or anything like that. Uh when I was on it, no. Okay. When now like when I'm off it, I because fruits have sugars too, right, so I fructose, couldn't eat it. Yeah. But no, I just rotate it in. Okay. I just watch how much of my sugars and carbs I'm doing okay. from now on. Nice. Have you ever um like been the type to count or track calories and macros or anything? Tried it, didn't work. It is kind of tedious. It's yeah, it's hard and I was actually on a strict schedule on my food type of thing, not a schedule, but what I ate every morning uh, for breakfast. I had 500 calorie, 200 calorie snacks. You know, I was eating my 5-6 meals and snacks a day when I was on it. But um I just think it's BS. Yeah. I mean, I was eating, my limit was supposed to be 1,700 calories. I've heard for women you shouldn't have less than 1,200 or something. Um, yeah, less than 1,200, that's like starvation. Yeah, and it. well, I was only eating like 12 to 4. Yeah. I didn't need any more once I cut back, but I didn't see any results. Yeah, no, if you eat too, so, so the thing about cutting out too few calories is that your body will go into starvation mode thinking that food is scarce, like you're in like a desert land. And I'm so you'll start better. to yeah you'll start to you'll start to blow up anyway, so having like, the reverse effect. Yeah, I'm not trying to look exactly, pregnant now. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I my general principle is starting off with someone is to have them write out in a journal journal what they're eating, and then from there they can kind of track what they're because I do think it's helpful to a certain extent. I just don't think it's sustainable. So if somebody can get to yeah. the point where they're able to look at a meal and be able to eye out about how many calories they're eating. Than I think, because I, I mean, I, I'm it's able to eye out how many calories I'm eating with each meal. Um, maybe not exactly, but I have a ballpark idea. So if people can train themselves to at least get to that point, then I think that's helpful. But it's better. I yeah. mean, there's a thousand ways to lose weight: it's calories in versus calories out. Eat what, eat less, you'll lose weight. So yeah. Yeah. there's so many different ways out there. Right, right. Keto thingy was the only thing that's worked for me so far, yeah. and it really shows that 75% of your weight loss is in the kitchen. Yeah. And I tried the kitchen so many times yeah. until I did this. Yeah. You really have to just cut back and change your body completely yeah. to not want that stuff yeah. anymore. Yeah. One 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 theory that just kind of shocks like my. I mean, one one thing that happened to a friend that kind of just shocks my whole nutrition theory was um, <laughs> she uh, her her well I won't say her name but she she went on a. Um, she went on a diet for this. I don't know what diet she did. It was low calorie though, mm -hmm. and um, she she. She didn't step into the gym for the entire summer. So three months she didn't work out, but she changed what she ate in the kitchen and dropped like 60 pounds over the summer. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. When I was, uh, when I did keto, I had my daily gym routine, but they said that you don't need to exercise. Right. You can do your basic minimum. Right. They recommend right. 30 hour, 30 minutes a day or a week or something. Right. And I said, okay. So I cut back from the gym too. And if I didn't do any gym, I had my cardio on Sunday, right. two hours of running right. or, or less. Yeah. And I, I lost the weight still. Yeah. I said, okay, this is for real. And then the next question was, once you're on this diet and you drop the weight, you should be able to sustain it. Cause right. that's the biggest thing. Exactly. It's the next question. Right. I did my diet, I lost it, and that's where I realized a lot of people don't understand dieting is a lifestyle change. Right. You're not just, you want to drop weight, weight, weight quick, great, right. but it's going to come back. Exactly. And so with this, um, um, they're like, as long as you don't go crazy and start eating crap again, you won't gain the weight. Because right. obviously you already created a great exactly. habit. Perfect. And if you go back to the same stuff, well, obviously the results are going to come yeah. back. Yeah. You know, so. And I'm glad I say the person's name because they actually did end up gaining the weight back. So, um, it just goes to show you, like, for me, my principle is exactly that. Just small, sustainable steps. I believe in 
I, I call it mini habits. It's like a foundation for, for my website, Daily Fit Boost, and it's just start off small, start off small. Just take things yeah. out and take things in, little things each week and stuff, and your body will be able to, just like you with carbs and everything, after you finish the, paleo, uh, the keto diet for three months, I mean, you try to eat a hamburger, your body's like, what's a carb? Like, <laughs> what is going on? And you know, your body will kind of work against you if you try to yeah all right definitely. now eat this <laughs> <laughs> it definitely did and um at the end of the day i think you're you're right you definitely have to take small steps For and sure. make small adjustments um the only reason I was able to go cold turkey is because I had been trying for a year, two years. I was done. I was at my breaking point where either I'm going to accept the fact that I'm 170 and I'm just going to be chunky and I have to start buying bigger clothes or I was going to do something about it and this was my last resort and it was just a blessing that it came to me because I'd never heard of it and I was like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm willing to try anything nice. that's going to work. <laughs> nice. So um, I want to segue into your pregnancy now and obviously you have to eat more calories or eating for yeah. two. <laughs> um, so what's changed? Um, so a quick comment on eating for two. Um, that is a lie until you hit about your second or third really? trimester. Okay. Yes. Because uh, I don't, I mean, and this is just stuff you Google or whatever, but you should naturally only gain about 20 pounds or so, give or take, um, or maybe 25. Throughout. Yes, because in the first trimester, your baby's just a little, right, it's tiny, sure, right? Sure. You're not, you're yeah. not, it's nothing. And when it comes out, babies are average between six and eight pounds. Right. So why did you gain 50 pounds when your baby weighs eight? So just, uh, yeah, that was one word. thing. Yeah, and uh, I'm blessed with a cousin who uh, likes to make fun of my weight and a wonderful <laughs> Nana who also notices when we gain weight and wants to make sure we don't gain too much. So. Um, literally this Easter, I weighed myself, and because I knew he was gonna ask me, "Oh, how fat are you now?" And I said, "I already stepped on the scale. I'm 170." Right. So I set myself a 20-pound goal um, for the whole nine months. Right now, I'm doing pretty good. I'm midway, and I'm about 172. So I'm a little nervous because I have four more months left and eight pounds to go. So. Nice. Depending on like, hey, if I hit 180 like at six months, if I were to hit it next month, then I'd know I'm doing too much. I'm re I'm way relaxing my body and my eating habits way too much. Because right. um, obviously you're not going to starve the baby, but like um, I mentioned, I don't know if it was on or off um, the air, but you want to keep a same natural routine because because your body's already going through all right. the stress. There's no need. Um, so my eating habits are still somewhat consistent, um, rotating fruit every week, more fruit than I would naturally eat because I want to make sure I give it some good healthy stuff versus chips or, um, I was like, I don't need a lot of snacks. I, don't, I was like, <laughs> I eat a lot of cereal when I need a snack. Um, and then my exercise level, um, yeah. unfortunately, because... I can't play soccer anymore and I found out pretty early on, um... What happened? Well, I, I found out like in two or three months pregnant or else oh, I would have okay. still kept playing. Oh, I you had to like, injure yourself. No, oh, okay. I wish. So that there goes my two hours of cardio. Okay. And then um, we hadn't, I my work schedule recently changed, so I'm working later. So mm -hmm. I hadn't been able to get in a good gym routine and waking up and going in the morning. So right um, now we don't have gym membership, so it was kind of hard because I missed my little sh machine that kind of works just my body enough. So. Mm -hmm. My main exercise is um, walking, trying to walk more than what I do, starting nice. out slow and picking it up. Um, not necessarily really running yet, even though that was my normal routine and I'm sure it'd still be fine for me to do so. And then just trying to do some lunges and things to keep my legs strong. Nice. Because you can feel your body just yeah. can't move as much right. anymore right. Um, the bigger you get. Right, I really admire the fact that you really have the mindset of you can do something, right? You know, even if it's walking, your schedule change, you get pregnant, there's always something that you can do, right? Yep, there's yeah. always challenges and obstacles for in sure. life. You gotta for adjust. Sure. Work around. Dang, I've learned a lot from this. <laughs> I can't wait to try out those uh, those sweets as well. Too. <laughs> I know, because Carissa likes to bake and cook and all that stuff. So Ooh, I'll give excited. her the recipe. Yeah, then. yeah, she'll, she'll hook that up for me for sure. So um, I like to, um, to wrap up. Um, each episode, I like to uh, for my guests to leave a tip, um, something that's worked for them, um, that's, that's helped you along your way that you can leave with the listeners, something that makes sense to you, something that's helped to change your life along your fitness journey. Um, I am a very competitive person, so I'd like to leave everybody with my motto from Ricky Bobby, if you're not first, you're last. Dang. Um, and you, I mean... 
it just shows me you can do anything you set your mind to. And I set my mind to committing to this diet. I lost my weight. I know what it feels like to lose it. And you, again, you can do anything you set your mind to. So if for you're sure. not first, you're last. So for be sure. first. Get it. <laughs> Get it. For sure. Okay, so I like to... um. I like to end each episode with some fun, quirky questions, rapid quick fire, just for oh our audience God. to get to know how your brain works. Oh my God. I, I'm asking the same questions. I'm going to change that for next episode. I'm going to find some new questions. Did you, did you, have you listened to any episode yet? No. Okay, good. Perfect. <laughs> okay, here we go. If you can be any animal in the world, what would it be and why? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, an elephant. Wow, you're the second elephant on here, my friend. I think my friend Jeff said that. Why an elephant? I'm going to say because they're strong and family-based. Yeah, that's true. I read up on elephants. That's, that's confirmed, for sure. <laughs> football or basketball? Oh, uh, football. For sure. Yeah. Would you rather fly or be invisible? Ooh. Ooh. Be in... Nah. Let's fly. Everybody said no, fly. No, I'm going to say invisible. I'm scared of heights. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I I think you're the first person that said invisible. It's very ancient. <laughs> Name one famous person, dead or alive, you'd love to have dinner with. Oh, man. A... Uh, it's tough, huh? Uh, mm, I'm trying. I'm going to go with Selena. Selena, ooh, it's a good yeah. one. Because there's a couple people on my mind, and I'm thinking, who could I really learn something yeah, from? Yeah, very interesting. That'd be, yeah, that would be a lot of good conversation with that. Super talented. <laughs> Summer or winter? <laughs> it's either or. Nobody, it's not a hard. I know. You I, either I, love I have summer to process or... like you can get. What can you get out of more? Like if I'm in a blizzard or a hundred degrees. Probably, I guess, summer, because I'm used to 100, you know, three digits. I could probably survive that better really? than a uh, blizzard. Wow. Yeah, I actually hate being cold, even We're though opposite. I hate the summer, but... We're opposite in that regard. That's okay. <laughs> three items you can't live without. Water? Is, is that an item? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, hope it is. We need it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Water, food, and my husband? Nice. You answer. There you go. Shout out. <laughs> and lastly, if you had one superpower, what would it be? Ooh, we just did this at work. What was my superpower? Oh, Jack Jack from The Incredibles. I'm a shapeshifter. I can do anything. Ooh, that's everything. a good one. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> you always want the one that's the best, and I got them all. Yeah, for sure. That, yeah, that little baby is legit. <laughs> Well, hey, thank you so much for coming on, Yasmin. It was a pleasure. I learned a freaking ton. I can't wait to re-listen to this. Um, I Congratulations once again. And we'll have to uh, have you on uh, sometime <laughs> later on next year or something like that oh, towards gosh. the end of the year <laughs> to see how your post-pregnancy is going. All right. <laughs> I got goals. I got to set them then. <laughs> for sure. Thanks for your time. Thank you.